Today on In Your Face Anatomy, we are learning the muscles of the face, the head, and the neck. So let's get into it. Good luck. Okay, muscles of the head and neck. We're going to jump right into it, starting off first with frontalis. The, front, the frontalis muscle gets its name from being under the frontal bone. and uh, Frontalis, it's your forehead muscle. All of this is frontalis. Next on our list, we've got our epicranial aponeurosis. So that is where the muscle becomes flat and joins our skull bone. So this at top is kind of this grayish, bluey coloration. This is my epicranial aponeurosis, attaching a lot of these muscles to the actual bones of the skull. Next up, I've got orbicularis oculi. So orbicularis tells us that it is orb-shaped or round. Oculi tells us it's the eye. So this is the muscle that surrounds our eye on each side, this round muscle that goes all the way around. This is orbicularis oculi. Next up, we've got depressor supercilii. So depressor supercilii is your eyebrow muscle. It's the one where you go, uh, 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 uh. and we can see it in on our model here, up la uh, uh, outlined in white. So this is my depressor supercilii. Uh, next up, we got nasalis, which of course is going to be on the nose on each side. Nasalis, nasalis. Then we've got orbicularis oris. So same kind of concept. It's a round muscle that goes around our mouth. Orbicularis oris. Now don't confuse this with orbicularis oculi. Orbicularis oris. Orbicularis oculi. Both are round, eh, but one around the eye, one around the mouth. <laughs> then we've got levator and labi superior. So that name alone, levator, just means to elevate or to lift. Uh, labi is our word for lip, and superior is up. So we're going to, this is the muscle when it contracts, it's going to lift the lift, lip up. So it's this one right here. It's kind of hard to see. It's under orbicularis oris. Let me grab a pen. Boom. It's this muscle right in here. This is the Vader labi superior. Because when it contracts and gets shorter, work, it's going to pull that corner of a mouth up. So this is a smiley muscle. All right. Next up, we got zygomaticus minor. Zygomaticus major and rhizorius. So these we can see really well on this side. So this yellow behind here, this is my uh, parotid gland, one of my salivary, salivary glands for my digestive system. But crossing this along the top here is zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major. So for some reason, I don't know why, but in most cases, probably 95% of the time, when we have a major and a minor, the minor is always above the major when it comes to muscles. So zygomaticus minor is above zygomaticus major, and then cutting right across our parotid gland here, this is rhizorius. Minor, major, rhizorius, cutting across. All right, next on our list, we've got depressor anguli oris. So this is one of our frowny muscles where levator meant to elevate or to lift. Depressor is to pull down. Anguli for at an angle and oris is for our mouth. So depressor anguli oris means to pull the mouth down at an angle. So this is one of our frowny muscles. We can see it's a decent size kind of triangular shaped muscle here. This is depressor anguli oris. Right next to it is depressor and labi inferior. Get around here where I can see. There, it's uh, right there. Depressor labi inferior. So this is a muscle that's just going to pull the mouth down. So right here, bam. I'm sure my fingers aren't in the way. So depressor anguli oris, depressor labi inferior, orbicularis oculi. And then right at the tip here, this is mentalis. That's our next one. Mentalis. Mental, of course, means chin. So mentalis, uh, our depressor labii inferior, depressor anguli oris. All right. Buccinator. So to get to the buccinator, we're going to turn to this side of the head. 
And buccinator is one of our muscles of mastication, so it means we use it for chewing. It's right here. It's pretty easy to spot. It's got this yellow dot in it showing some of the vessels or lymphatic vessels traveling through or the nerves. It could be a nerve. They're yellow as well. Um, but either way, this is my buccinator muscle. Then I've got auricularis superior, auricularis anterior, and auricularis posterior. So auricularis just tells us around the ear is what it is. Like oracle to here, auricularis for the ear. So the one above the ear is going to be auricularis superior. The one in front of the ear is going to be auricularis anterior. And the one behind the ear is going to be auricularis posterior. Auricularis superior, auricularis anterior, auricularis posterior in the back. Next up, we've got the masseter muscle. So the masseter is another muscle of mastication, and it's one, more of a superficial muscle. We can see it here. So if we peel this back, then we're going to be able to get to that buccinator that we were looking at earlier. And here we got the masseter. This is also the muscle when you see people chew their jaw. Mm. You hear that move? Mm. Mm. I, I don't know why I'm making that noise. Either way, masseter. Temporalis is going to be around that uh, temporal bone on the temple side of the head. All of this nice big muscle here. Temporalis. Then I got my pterygoids. I got the medial pterygoid and the lateral pterygoid. Nope, I'm back on this side still. So they're right behind the buccinator, and I'm going to get in close for this one because they get a little tricky here. So buccinator, and then these two muscles. This is two different muscles. Mm, shit. There we go. This is my pterygoid muscles. So one of these is medial, one of these is lateral. And how I tell the difference is instead of saying lateral, I say lateral, lateral, lateral. That's what it is. That's what it is. I, I, I add the word ear into lateral, lateral, lateral. So I know that the one that goes to the ear, this one up here, that's my lateral pterygoid. That means this other one has to be the medial pterygoid down here. Lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid. Buccinator. All right, then we got sternocleidomastoid. So that's a pretty easy one. They also call this the SEM because nobody wants to write out sternocleidomastoid. Um, so the SEM muscle, this nice big thick neck muscle everyone has on the side of their neck, comes down all the way to the sternum down here, comes up and attaches to that mastoid process, sternocleidomastoid, nice, big, thick one. And you can call this the SCM. All right, then we got sternohyoid, sternothyroid, and thyrohyoid. So with this, these three muscles, we're really looking for three uh, landmarks here. I need the sternum, top of my sternum, boom, there it is. I need my uh, thyroid gland, which we can see in the back. It's kind of this orange area in the back here on each side. This is my thyroid gland. And then I need my hyoid bone, which I can see poking up right here. There's my hyoid bone. So if we look at first, sternohyoid, we're looking for a muscle that runs from my sternum to the hyoid bone, hence the name sternohyoid. And that's going to be on this side right here at the base, kind of where sternocleidomastoid comes in. Boom. Coming up all the way up from the sternum to the hyoid bone. This is sternohyoid. Then I've got sternothyroid and thyrohyoid. So next up, we're going to sterno, uh, thyroid from the sternum to the thyroid gland. So it's this muscle right here, sternothyroid. Then thyrohyoid is going to run from the thyroid gland to the hyoid bone, and that's this muscle right here. They've got this nice white line on here to help separate those two muscles so we can make that distinction. And, but we're just looking, where does it run from and go to? So from my sternum to the thyroid gland, from my thyroid gland to the hyoid bone, from my sternum to the hyoid bone. So sternohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid. Pretty easy once you pull out those landmarks. All right, then I've got the scalenes. I've got my anterior scalene, my medial scalene, and my posterior scalene. So these three muscles kind of run together like that on the side of my neck. They're all kind of grouped up right on top of each other. And so we can see them here with a little bit of a nerve sticking out in between them. So there's the nerve. 
So it's these three skinny muscles. Each one's about the size of a pencil. Let's see if I can get in there and show them. Yep. So the one in the front is going to be my anterior scaling right here. The one in the middle is my middle scaling. And the one in the back here is my posterior scaling. And it's that easy. Anterior scaling, middle scaling, posterior scaling. Right there. Then I've got levator scapulae. So again, remember levator means to elevate or lift. Scapulae is just short for the scapula. So here's the top of my scapula. So it's going to be this muscle here that comes down and attaches to it. So when it contracts, boom, that's going to lift the scapula up. It helps you raise your shoulders. Levator scapulae. It's right next to the scalings. All right, and we got splenia capitis and semispinalis capitis. So for this one, we're going to flip over to the back of the head. And capitis tells us that these two muscles attach to the head itself. So these muscles come up and attach to the head. I've got splenus and I've got uh, semispinalis. How I remember this is I look at these two muscles. These are my capitis muscles, these two here. Now, if I look at the fibers, zoom in close on these fibers, one, this set of fibers, see how it goes straight up and down, and it runs along the spine. That's how I remember that this is semispinalis capitis, because the fibers run along the spine. The other fibers running at a diagonal here, that is going to be splenius capitis. So splenius capitis, semispinalis capitis. Let me zoom out on that again so we get the whole effect here. Splenius capitis, semispinalis capitis. So we got rhomboid minor and rhomboid major. So, and nope, we're still on the back. That is here. These two muscles. I need to really pick this up. There we go. These two muscles are my rhomboids. Remember, minor is typically on top of major, and that holds true in this case. So, rhomboid minor. Rhomboid major. Rhomboid minor is also the smaller one. Rhomboid major is going to be the bigger one, hence the name major and minor. Trapezius. So trapezius is a big, giant, triangular muscle, diamond-shaped muscle, I should say, that covers up most of everything else on our back. So we can see half of it here, or at least a piece of it. All of this is trapezius. So one whole side of the back is trapezius. We have to get rid of that to be able to see rhomboid major and minor, and my capitis muscles. We're going to get uh, trapezius out of there. That's why we're only showing half of it here. So that, trapezius on this side. <clears throat> All right, deltoid is the shoulder muscle. Not a great picture. We'll have a better deltoid when we get to the arm. Just know, of course, deltoid is the shoulder muscle here. All right, pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. So this one <coughs> doesn't really follow that minor major um, plan that we had earlier where the minor is always above the major. But this one, um, they're really not even close to each other. So pectoralis major is the big chest muscle. It's everybody's chest muscle. That is pectoralis major. If we pull that back and get rid of it on this other side, we've got a piece here of pectoralis minor. So its job is to help in respiration. It comes down and it branches into these three branches like so. And attaches to rib number three, rib number four, and rib number five, and helps elevate the sternum um, when we're breathing. So pectoralis major, nice big chest muscle. Underneath it, pectoralis minor. Then I've got supraspinatus, which is just going to be a, uh, above the spine of the scapula. So here we go, supraspinatus, above the spine. So it's sitting in that supraspinous fossa of the scapula. And lastly, I've got my intercostals. So intercostals means between the ribs. So that is going to be these muscles here. So these are my intercostals. This is both of them. And if you run your finger across it, you'll feel one of them is deeper than the other. So the most superficial one, that is going to be my external intercostal. The deeper one below that is going to be my internal intercostal. So external internal and their fibers run in different directions which makes it a little bit easier to see when you actually have the models in your hand so that is it for the muscles of the head and neck good luck